Take a look at your screen. That's right. The Bulls have retaken the lead in the battle for S&P 1000. Crossed to 1007 today after a gain of more than 1% or nearly 11 points. This on a day that AIG stock jumped over 20% after its CEO suggested the insurance giant may be ready to pay back the TARP money at some point and maybe even return some money to shareholders. Is that possible? Here to discuss is Michael Ryan, head of UBS Wealth Management Research, Scott Nations, Nations Shares Chief Investment Officer and Options Action Contributor, and Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital and author of Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. Peter, let me start with you. Uh, let's start with AIG. Uh, the CEO gets caught on vacation somewhere and he says he's optimistic that they're going to pay back all the money. He even thinks that maybe the shareholders are going to end up with something. Uh, do you think that's possible? Highly unlikely. I'm sure that he'll end up with a lot of money as well as everybody else that's going to get bonuses. Oh, Look, the you know, cynicism. There's a, there's a lot of uh, traders in the financials, but investors need to stay away. All that's really happened, apart from uh, accounting rule changes that have benefited them, is they got a lot of free money from Washington. They took it to the Wall Street casino. They placed some bets. The bets are going their way right now. They're lavishing the winnings on themselves with bonuses and, and, and raises. There's nothing for the shareholders in the way of dividends. As soon as these bets turn sour, the share price are going to plunge again for new lows. Scott, and the executives are going to be back in Washington looking for more bailout money. Scott, how much of what we saw today was a short squeeze? The CEO says something positive. There's a lot of people like Peter thinking like Peter, and they're short the stock, and then suddenly they're getting creamed. That's right. We've seen classic short squeezes recently with VW, and it gets really ugly. But Peter is right. It is adult swim, kids out of the pool, because nearly every share outstanding traded today. Now, if you have a 1,000 shares in your safe deposit box, you're wondering how that happened. And it just means that there's so much turnover that the traders are in charge. People who are short are buying it back. They're putting it out. They're buying it back again. So obviously, uh, the traders are in charge. That's not a good place for investors. But mm -hmm. this is a classic short squeeze. Classic squeeze. I like when you say adult swim. Keep your bathing suit on. <laughs> Michael, you want to weigh in here before we move on to the, the overall markets? Well, first of all, I think yeah, the, the comments about adult swim are appropriate. But let's not forget there's one additional element here that hasn't been talked about so far. It's about change of leadership as well. You know, basically what we've seen so far is caretakers who have been basically in a garage sale. And now you have someone who's more of a business builder, Bob Benmoshe. And, and so the dynamics are a little bit different right now. So I, I don't think it was a purely about those who got caught on the short side uh, on a, on strictly on spec. I do think there's a directional change in terms of the leadership, too. All right, Michael, tell me what you think about S&P 1000. We're back above it. We've done this three or four times. Are we going to hold this time? Uh, you know, we're going to see some back and forth. I, I still think we're mostly in a trading range, but I think uh, over the course of the balance of this year, we will see equity markets continue to grind higher. But this is still going to be a, this case where we're going to look for uh, proof points in terms of the real economy. We're going to continue to look very, very closely at the corporate earnings. And I do think what we'll see is an emergence of continued evidence that the economy is getting marginally better. But you're not going to see this you know, sudden swoop of good information mm -hmm. that's going to drive equities just significantly higher for the balance of the it's year. It's going to be like drip, 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 right? Scott, what does that mean in terms of the markets? Do you think the S&P is going to hold it at 1,000 here? It, it probably will, largely because there's, there's no catalyst now to drive us higher. We're through the bulk of earnings season. The problem with earnings season, we look at it and we say, hey, great, all these companies beat on the bottom, uh, on the bottom line, but the problem is only about 1 in 12 of the big companies, the S&P 500, being on both the top line and the bottom line. In other words, a lot of them were cutting costs but not improving revenue. That's right. And we, see the, and we know how they're cutting costs because we're, we see the jobs numbers and the claims numbers every Thursday, and it's not really pretty. So uh, it's going to be a little bit tough. The companies that are going to do well going forward are probably the companies that have pricing power because they're going to be able to leverage the top line a, bit, a little bit better than, mm -hmm. uh, say, Walmart, who's going to have a tough time uh, raising prices and boosting revenue. Peter Schiff, I'll bet you don't think S&P 1000 holds. Well, it's not going to hold indefinitely, but my gut is that there's more to this rally. I think it has more legs, but you have to keep it in perspective. It is a bear market rally. The primary trend is down. This market is heading lower eventually. So uh, are you, know, you trading this right now? No, I'm not really active in the U.S. market. I have my money okay. offshore. I'm in foreign markets. I'm in commodities. I'm in legitimate bull markets. I don't want to try to time bear market rallies. So, is, so if, if, if we have traders out there who are watching you right now, you think this is a bear market rally that has more to go, how much longer would you stay in if you were playing it? I don't know. I mean, I don't, have, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not playing it. I understand that it's very dangerous, and I think a lot of people are going to get hurt 
who are reading anything into this, that there's a new bull market or that the worst is over for the U.S. economy, we've only just begun. I mean, this recession is going to outlast Barack Obama's presidency. You know, so it, anyone who thinks that the economy Why? is improving. What, what's going to do that? Because we, we're getting a lot of economic data, which suggests to many economists yeah. that things have turned. Well, it doesn't suggest it to me. Maybe it suggests it to those economists who are completely blindsided by what's claims, happened. Claims, leading yeah. indicators. Look, look at, well, today you got an Fed increase. You got, you got an increase in claims. Look, we get a little bit of a boost from trillions of dollars of stimulus that has actually worsened the economy. They have undermined our economy further with additional debt, and they have crippled our economy with more government regulation and more government involvement in the market. All of these things are negative. Michael, Everything Michael that give has me been some done, Prozac here to, to the depressing stuff. Coming out of Peter, how do you counter him? Uh, recessions end, depressions end, this one ends as well. I, I think the case is here is that the point about the government assistance is appropriate. Certainly, uh, this is not yet as a self-sustaining recovery. Well, uh, it will end eventually. Just not anytime soon. Yeah, well, again, I, I, again, I, I'm not so sure about that. I think the, the notion that we, we never quite see the recovery coming until it's well upon us, and it's happened historically in the past, and I don't see anything fundamentally different about this. Yes, the credit well, creation very few problem. People, remember, very few people saw this recession coming even when we were in it. That's true, and, and I think what will happen... I think happen, that almost proves this point, actually, though. So uh, <laughs> the, the point is we'll, we'll, we're likely to miss the recovery until we're well into it as well. I don't All disagree. All right, so Scott says oh. go with companies that have pricing powers. Uh, Peter says he's not even in the U.S. market. Michael, what's your advice to investors who are watching right now? Well, we're, we're modestly long in the equity markets, but I, I don't disagree with the notion that there are better opportunities outside the U.S. Uh, we continue to overweight emerging markets and, and even other developed markets over the U.S. We think that the return prospects are better there. Even though emerging markets are really dependent on us and, and the U.S. consumer, I mean, they're, they're so, not. We're the guys, we're the people who the, buy all Michelle, that stuff. Michelle, that's, that's less and less important. If you're looking at what's happening, is they're actually repositioning themselves, that they're no longer completely dependent upon a consumer driven okay. cycle from the yeah. U.S. You got it backwards, Michelle. We depend on them. They produce, they save. We've got the, you know, we're, we're, I, we're getting a free I ride on their gravy the train. I the whole issue the, with treasuries and everything else, but when it comes to <laughs> all the cheap manufacturing that they do, we buy it. We and don't buy it because we, we, we don't emerging markets. We don't pay for it. We don't have is, any. <laughs> the problem with emerging markets, and we, we've seen this recently in China, is they are incredibly volatile. And, oh, yeah. and, and if we're going to rely on them or we're going to invest our money outside of them, then boy, fasten your seatbelt and, and wait out the ride because it is going to be incredible. Thank you, gentlemen. The show's been Thank incredible. You. Good ride, right? All right, Michael Ryan, Scott Nation's Peter Schiff. Good to see you.